Hello there, welcome to episode 5 of my tutorial series for Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead. Today's topic will be the basics of vehicles. You know, vehicles are some really, really useful thing in this game. You can do quite a lot with it. And in this episode, I'm going to cover how to drive a vehicle, how to discern if it's uh, drivable or not, and how to keep it in shape, how to read this screen somewhat, and show a few tricks in between, and that's going to be it. Vehicles in this game are amazing. You can do so much with them. Basically, every vehicle is adaptable and uh, individual. You can individualize it as you see fit. So, just to put some clarification into this, this little weird thing that you see here, that's a uh, ASCII description of your car. So, when you're uh, when you're seeing there, this is the blue um, dot here. So here we have we can examine each and every part of the car so a car needs to sit on the frame you see that's always the topmost uh, thing on the list and then you see what's been attached to the frame at that very spot so this is just the basics we're going to fiddle around with that a little bit later but i just meant to uh, give you some some information about how to read these things because on this screen you can totally check out what's going on with your car and what's where and everything so know whether or not a car will drive so we're going to examine one that won't drive so uh, zombie dog oh well that's fine so let's get on over to this bus here and examine it so first thing to check is the engine intact or faulty so here you see faulty is grayed out and if you check it out here it's faulty as well so that doesn't necessarily say that the car won't drive but if a engine is faulty there is a chance that it either won't go on every time you try or it won't go on at all it's it's a question of uh, you know you don't know it if you're not in uh, if you're uh, just uh, browsing it as far as i know let me know if there's a way to find out if a faulty engine is actually drivable or not however so the next thing you want to check here is the tanks of your car so are the tanks present and are they leaking or not and is there something in them so this car has a yes on this check mark and the batteries is there something on them are they leaking or something like that so here's a check too without batteries the car won't start then you go on over here so here it's really important to check is there are there still controls without controls you can't drive the thing and is the seat still there you cannot drive a uh, car without the seat on the driver's uh, place either the last thing you got to check there is the wheels and here you see it already wheels lack so the moment there is a lack on the wheels it is uh, not possible to drive that thing anymore so it's always checking for if the engine is good are the tanks good is the battery good are the controls present is a seat present are the wheels present and uh you know when you check out cars in the city like most of the time you will you will get that noped out for example here the controls are banged up except for that this car is fantastic so uh you can always check out and get in there and uh press here control vehicle if you are insecure if you read it correctly if the car is uh drivable when you go on control vehicle you get more controls if not you see what had just happened let's get on over to a car that's actually drivable the one we uh, procured last episode so here you see it has a faulty engine but it doesn't stop it from uh, from driving obviously it has gasoline in the tanks it has a car battery it has wheels it has controls it has a seat the security system being smashed is actually a good thing because if the security system is running sometimes you will need either a key or skills and cracking cars so that can be pretty hard too okay i'll leave it like that this is uh, the the basics of how to read that thing you can always see here the description of all the parts knock yourself out and uh, check it out currently we cannot do much on the car because we don't have tools to fix a car or or do something new to uh, put something new on a car or something like that we don't have those tools so i'm skipping that for now okay so let's talk about the driving so first off we get in there i press c to close the doors pretty 
have all the doors closed when you drive, okay? It's really important. You don't want a high-speed wasp driving, uh, zooming on your driver's seat while you're passing by things, you know? It's really important. Open doors are bad. So, next thing, I press enter and go onto the control vehicle thingy. So, you see that's the hotkey for controlling vehicle. And now we see here the hatchback with bike rack's engine starts up. Now you see we got a speed here. This is a new thing. And now you see that white grid here. This is the direction of the car. When you press left and right, you steer the wheels, but uh, there's currently nothing happening. When you're pressing uh, up, you're increasing the speed. You know, that's the speed, the target speed. And when you're pressing backwards, you're reducing the speed until you can go negative. That's when you're driving backwards. So first off, you define what kind of speed you want to have. I strongly recommend just the lowest speed when you're new to it. And when you now press the five on the num block, you see first the target speed got adjusted to the actual current speed. And now when you press five again, car starts to roll. So you can now change the direction. And as you see here, changing the direction does already let time pass. So whenever I press the direction change, just want to show you here, my car moves ahead. So. Let's press M to see. We're gonna cruise. Where, where do we wanna cruise? So first off, I press E to examine my vehicle. So you see, my car has only 46 minutes until the gasoline is empty. Our car is quite empty. Our battery will refill while driving. That's just a, a lateral thing. Here, it's important. You have to drive your car every now and then. Don't just turn it off and on. <laughs> Because that would drain the battery, just in real life, like in real life. Okay, so, well, let's let's drive just uh, over to that evac shelter and back, okay? Just to give you guys an impression about how to drive cars. So first off, I zoom out, just like that, because I want to see more. And now I'm pressing 5 again, until my car is somewhat past that wreck here. And now I'm steering this direction. So you see this doesn't do much, so we're steering one more time. And now the car does something funky. It glitches like that. So yeah, this is how a car in Cataclysm looks like when it's steering around a curve. It's damn funky. Consider it like a blur motion thing. But uh, this, uh, yeah, this just happens when you're, uh, when you're driving diagonally, all right? So now we're steering back and normalizing the car. Don't take this perspective, this perspective glitch too serious, okay? It's just how the game renders things. And now we can drive a tad bit faster. So as you see, the higher the speed, the more ground we cover per, per turn, right? Okay, so we can now drive on over to the evac shelter. Vroom vroom. And uh, now we could use our car for the sake of plundering things here, how about that? So uh, we're going to do this just like in real life. I'm parking my car in a way that the hatch is uh, close to the thing. So now I'm driving backwards, putting the temp the speed to minus six. And as you see there, driving closer. And now we go to a net uh, zero control vehicle, stop driving. As you see here, there's uh, several things that you can do here, totally depending on the gear in your current car. We're just going to go stop driving. The car will now stop and uh, we can now go over here. So the fantastic thing about a car is everything inside of the interior frame is going to be stored in here, all right? We can store stuff with that. So let's bring up our makeshift hammer and start smashing these doors, right? So here we go. You can now just uh, grab all these things that we want to grab. For example, let's just say we want to grab all the all the wood here. All right. So we're going to press again the zones manager. I'm adding a zone for wood, just like that, and I'm uh, adding it in the back. Uh, bind this zone to the cargo part here. So this way you could now bind the zone to be permanently part of your car. I'm not going to do this uh, currently, but just want to mention this is an option. So first off, whoopsie, oh damn, no, I pressed the wrong button, so. 
let me redo that. So first off, we do this, and then now we add the uh, unsorted uh, zone again. And uh, just like you know it already, we're doing this. So there we go. Save changes, yes. Press capital O. And my dude now goes through this place, went in there, and now we got planks, splintered wood, and that stick in the car. So this way, with the loot zones, you can basically pack whatever you want out of any structure inside your car. That's nifty, isn't it? So we're going to remove these zones for now, because, you know, we, we did a, a thing. Just uh, keep in mind, you could um, put permanent um, zones to your car as well. Now, next thing we're going to go, we're... Uh, we're going to go back to the city, right? So I want to show you what you can do as well. So I'm going here now, pressing capital W twice, you know, the root planner. And uh, this way, we can also automate driving. You see, the game does the driving for us. So that I, I find that really nifty. I, I really enjoy that feature because, you know, driving with a car can turn a little bit tedious in the long run, but, uh, Finally, let me know, let me tell you, don't try to hit solid obstacles with your car, you know? This will ultimately go bad on you. You want to try to avoid every solid obstacle with your car, be it headlights or uh, street lights, I'm sorry. Here, street lights like these or, or larger rocks can also turn into a major problem. Everything that would uh, that you would assume would make a bump into your car will most likely make a bump into your car. So everything else that's uh, going to be something you will learn over the course of the time. So now we got the problem still, our tank is quite empty, so let's do something about that. Step one, we require the tools to disassemble something. Step two, we're going to head on over to the refrigerator of your choice. And deconstruct that furniture. Oh, that's new. <laughs> All right, never mind. Um, I'm confused. Way back when you could. All right. There once was a time when you were able to just dismantle um, the freezers and get a uh, certain part out of that that I'm uh, looking for now. But let's just uh, go into the. Uh, neighboring house and just smash up that freezer. You don't seem to be damaging the refrigerator. Alright, these things got an update. So, uh, well, I don't know where you get a rubber hose nowadays from. Okay, that's uh, something I didn't see coming. So, just to give you some clarification, um, there was once a time where you could uh, bring up a, a rubber hose quite easily from a uh, freezer. So basically, we would be using that thing to um, to get our items out of that. Okay, so this is one unexpected difficulty that I didn't see coming. So we're going to see whether or not we got something here already. So a rubber hose is uh, quite a quite a good thing. Going to wait now until our breath is back. And uh, well, I found these uh, quite often also in several households, but uh, looks like this time we are a tad bit out of luck. All right, so that was a little bit uh, surprising to me. Sorry if that uh, bothers you. But this has been a change in the in the latest version still. So. I didn't see that one coming. If somebody knows where to get a uh, rubber hose nowadays from, let me know. Because I must say, in all honesty, we gotta wait now until we uh, find one. But that's also okay. In the meantime, we can continue plundering like that. So, our vehicle now, I want to showcase the last uh, time here. A, a last cool trick that you can use here. So, we got all those uh, loot zones here. So, the food loot zone, for example. I'm pressing it here and I'm moving the position now into the car so we're now going to move those positions into the car let's do this with all those that have something on them and I bet you can't already uh, guess where this is all going to go this is all leading to 
So, here goes the clothing. And now goes the unsorted zone. We're going to edit that now. And now we're going to pull the unsorted zone all over the loot here. Save that. Press capital O. And uh, what's uh, happening next is we pretty much brought up all the things that we were able to into the car. So when you notice that sometimes things just don't uh, get stashed anymore, there is a limit to the volume of things, you know. So we could now, for example, see which one of those zones isn't uh, fully emptied so i can show you better so the the weapons category hasn't emptied hasn't been emptied so here it goes let's pick that up edit the position edit position and now we're going to make it uh, like uh, this large and there it goes now you notice it's all in there so uh tldr there is a limited amount of space in your car if there is no not enough space in your car anymore, the game will pretend as if the zones are broken or not reacting in any way. So that's something you gotta be uh, wary about. So um, rubber hoses and the like can be often found in garages, and I I have to browse through um, my 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 internet knowledge uh, bases here to know whether or not how to circumvent that problem. I'm actually quite glad that the, that the devs finally fi fixed that uh, super easy way of uh, getting your rubber hose, but uh, sadly, since there has been this super easy way of grabbing out rubber hose, I never learned it uh, the other way, you know. No. That's the thing, when you're playing experimental, the game gets rebalanced quite often. What we're doing now is uh, we're going to drive our car to our base, you know. So, well, and that's just what you see there. This was too fast. And parts of the car now broke uh, apart. I, I actually don't mind that at this demonstration here. So, it doesn't kill your car at all to um, if it uh, crashes somewhere. Like, um, you need to do some real violence to your car until it stops driving. But for example, now here, we lost a little bit of scrap metal here and uh, electronic scraps. We also destroyed the, the 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 hedge here. So all in all, we we did damage the car. You could also see the damage here on these parts if I if I had a clue what was there before, but uh, that's that. So now we can go back to our other zones here. You see, we have all those zones here already des um, designed. And now we just add another unsorted uh, loot zone on the top of our car. And this way you can easily get all the stuff that you have pilfered on your journey out of the car. So here it shows that we don't have a weapons category. So let's add that. And this way you can easily use your car as a ways and means to transport your loot. I really like that, you know. So here, let's redo that, and there we go. So now, well, we still need to find a rubber hose, so uh, sadly we don't have that. And uh, like I said, I'm going to fix that up. But in theory, if you have a rubber hose, all you need afterwards would be a container, which can store liquids, and then you're good to go, and you can just... Uh, grab all the fuel from all the tanks because basically that's all you need to plunder and pilfer things from other cars. Basically my personal go-to strategy is just to pilfer the fuel from the other cars. I'm glad it has it has been made harder because I personally think you know Cataclysm is a game where the difficulty level is really a lot about where you get take the game. Like a lot of people like to say, the moment you have a base, a food income and a certain amount of uh, armor, it is basically very very hard to die here. That's it. That is as it is. So, there's still plenty of time left for this episode. I want to show one thing that I really really want to do here next. So, we have that ground crafting spot. This is 
not really a good one, you know? Let's get on over here and uh, search in the construction menu, asterisk symbol, for a table. So as you see here, we can quite simply build ourselves a table. We have pretty much all the tools here. Fabrication level one is also not much of a problem. We're just lacking a couple of nails. So seriously, a couple of nails, that's that's the least of our worries. But we're going to um, we're going to vandalize the area here not much further. I want to um, make sure that we deconstruct furniture simply because this is just the uh, best way of getting your resources, uh, the most out of your resources. So that bench here doesn't have any nails. Tragic. You can always uh, re rely on doors to have nails. There we go. That's that. And now we're, uh, we're going to make us a table. The thing is, a table should work out. Let's see, let's construct that here. So we have that table now here. And uh, well, we can now smash the crafting spot. Smashing it destroys it. Now we have a uh, table right next to us. The thing is, you are crafting much faster on a table rather than uh, without a table. And that's basically all that I am after here. So we're going to cook us some eggs here since we have fire and uh, our character actually needs some food. And uh, well, here begins our, our first day in the, uh, in the everyday life in the Cataclysm. So we got to take care of our resources here. We're far away from having everything we want. The next big thing that we got to acquire is um, some sort of armor. As you see, my guy here is quite uh, terribly banged up, so we got to change something about that, don't we? Until then, we're we're going to make those. Uh, we're going to bandage us a little bit, and uh, let's see, can we make bandages? So here we go. Cat patchwork cotton sheets. Patchwork cotton sheets, by the way, are really really important. So, and what's also really important is. Try to stand right next to the table. And uh, yeah, don't smash your table accidentally. <laughs> uh, I didn't mean to do that. I, I also didn't expect it to be smashed that easily. So if you're looking for um, the, um, you know, since we got to do this one more time, these large wooden panels, um, you can't find them here when you, when you dismantle larger, larger structures. <laughs> This is so stupid. Alright, uh, that didn't happen to me ever before. There's always a new thing. Alright, so uh, we're going to edit the unsorted position here. And at this point here, you see that there is a uh, weariness and a transition. So the more I dismantle things, I'm trying to show you, the more my weariness will increase. So the weariness comes in several levels, and you see it depletes the more work I do. And it's basically um, a, a denominator about how pissed off my character is about just working instead of having fun, you know? The more exertion here is on that, the slower your crafting goes. Basically, ideally, you stop working when it's uh, looking like this because your dude is uh, going to be quite unhappy otherwise. All right, let's uh, slam in some eggs and uh, let's see. My character is very wounded at this point, so I'm still not very eager to go for any bigger combat. We still have those bandages, so this is one thing that I really, really um, can recommend. Those boiled makeshift bandages, they are just, uh, just a godsend, you know? They are that good. And the best part about it is, I don't know if you realized it at the, mo the moment, you always get some clean water afterwards as a bonus. So you create not only bandages, you also get yourself some clean water. And that's uh, as far as things go in this game, a pretty good deal. So since my character is way too banged up for my uh, own uh, liking, we're going to do another thing. So we're going to get a loot area with manuals. There we go. 
So manuals are all the books that you can use to get better at something. Next step, you already might go, you already might grow familiar with these. We're going to edit the unsorted area to just uh, fetch all the manuals out of the house. There we go. We also happen to sort out a lot of other things out of the house while we were at it. And here we have a couple of books. So remember at the beginning of the game that I that I gave my character a lot of uh, this, this reading background perk? Here's why. Capital R for reading the books. And uh, here you now see it tr th these books train a, a certain skill level. So Ham Radio Illustrated will train my electronics to one. My current level is zero. What's important to note here is this is theoretical knowledge. This means your character still has to do something practical. Basically, I read that book about electronics, then I will gather the experience points for that topic much faster when I do the next time something with electronics. So I'm pressing five now to interrupt that because my dude is getting very hungry and very thirsty during the process of that. So here we're going to use another little trick. We have food and food and drink on the same thing. So auto drink and auto eat will be now processed at this point. So my character will automatically grab some stuff when he's uh, hungry or thirsty. So let's uh, put some clean water on top of that. And let's see, let's keep reading. All right, I want to check now if my bandages are good. So here you see the bandages do deteriorate over the course of the time. If the quality falls from poor to very poor, I strongly recommend you to reapply the bandages. And what's also really good is your worst banged up body part always uh, enjoys some disinfections, disinfectants. Even a small dosage like alcohol wipes helps, you know. It might, it might not be much, but disinfectants are their own health multiplier on their own. Here we go. And you see, we're, we're healing up while, um, while we're reading. So my theoretical knowledge of that topic is now higher. And we're now good to go for our next adventure. I'm not going to go now for um, with the car, simply because I don't dare to. But it's uh, 7 p.m. We're surely able to procure a few more materials before the break of darkness. So that's been pretty much all I wanted to say about vehicle basics today. I know the second part of the video had nothing to do with vehicles anymore. I'm a little bit sad that I didn't manage to get myself a rubber hose, so if you ever grab hold of a rubber hose, it's it's just uh, it's just that good, okay? So, between this and the next episode, I'm going to take the liberty of freeing up this uh, city a little bit, and uh, in the next episode, I want to go a little bit deeper into the crafting procedures of armor, things that's, that keep us alive, because currently our character is getting banged up way too easily and I want to change that. So, thanks for watching you all, I hope you enjoyed, we're going to continue as usual. Leave me a comment down there if you have any topics that you want to see covered in the series that I'm not uh, addressing enough for your uh, liking or whatever might be the case. And of course, consider subscribing, I'd be absolutely delighted if you did. And as usual, have a good one. Check out the description box. A big, big thanks to the supporters of the channel. There's a couple of links that you might want to check out if you want to feel like you deserve that thanks as well. And regardless of that, I appreciate so much that you watched that video until its very point. Helps me more than you might think. And I wish you a great day. See you there.